Hey, I'm Mike O'Dowd, this is Zach Ferguson and Angel Cortez, and we're with USCCA. Today we're going to be going over a tactical breakdown of a video we just recently saw. Six police officers in Oklahoma shooting at a suspect, and all of them miss. Please keep in mind that we don't have the full context of this video. We weren't there, uh, and we're not judging the police officers uh, or judging anyone involved. Uh, we're also not lawyers. We're not giving legal advice. What we are doing is giving our own personal opinions from experience of what we saw that went right and uh, also some things that maybe they could have done better. Hey, 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 look, this, this cop right here barely draws now. So I saw a whole bunch of stuff like not ideal with it. I wouldn't say wrong because, you know, tactics, it's uh, rare to have something wrong, uh, but there are better ways of doing things. Angel, what, do you, what are some of the things you saw in there? Well, at, at that distance with the pistol, you can't rapid shoot. You can. You have to take your time with each shot. Um, and I learned that lesson firsthand in Afghanistan. We had a, um, a guy detonate an ID a little too early, uh, maybe like 40 feet too early, and I saw him run. And I shot at him, and instead of taking my time as he's running, I'm just pulling real hard on, oh, there's like dust all over him. And so when I saw that video, that's the first thing I thought is that they did what I did is they they saw something, the adrenaline, the 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 you know emotion of the whole situation, and they just got the better of them. And they just started slapping the trigger really hard. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like one of the biggest takeaways we have for this video is the distance that they had was roughly 25 yards and uh the the panic that comes with having uh, a potential shoot target uh threat is that you want to shoot fast 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 but you have to take that tactical pause 25 yards with a pistol it's not an easy distance and you can't shoot the same cadence at 25 yards and be accurate as you are at five yards let's say and that's what you see you see bam 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 bam, bam. you hear the shots going really fast and then you see splashes all over these were these weren't just misses. These were pretty gross misses. There were rounds hitting, you know, five, seven yards ahead of the target. Uh, there's rounds low left, low left, low left, which is very common. Uh, it's the most commonly missed shot for a right-handed shooter. These three fingers flinch, and it brings low left, low left, low left. Um, looking at some of the grips of the police officers, some of the grips look to be more passive than active, very tight, strong grips. The female officer, like Mike was saying, poor grip. As well as she was looking at the suspect, I didn't necess necessarily see her eyes down the sights. So it looked like she was aiming low, which is also why they're mashing and missing really low. One good thing uh, we saw from the officer with the non-lethal gun on the left-hand side, he took his initial shot, missed, called out to his partners, and knowing he didn't have a, a lethal firearm in his hand, as soon as um, the, fire, or the shooting went back and forth, he ducked behind the wheel well, which provided him cover. And if he wanted to, he could have put his left lethal down, pull out his firearm, and then re-engage from there. So I thought he did a good job hiding behind that wheel well for cover. Yeah, I, I thought that was really great. Uh, he, he actually took the cover. That same officer, I think, was the guy talking as well. He, he, uh, his voice was calm the entire time. The verbiage that you say, it has consequences. And, and not just the verbiage, but the way you say it, um, for instance, like, when we would be in the house, we would try to always stay, say, quiet, right? As little talking as possible, only what's necessary. So what we're gonna do now is, is demonstrate uh, the difference of shooting rapidly at five yards and then shooting rapidly at 25 yards. Uh, Zach's gonna take the shots for this. Uh, Zach's a, a very competent shooter and we'll see what it does, uh, his impact shooting rapidly uh, at five versus 25. All right, so what we're going to do is kind of show what it's like shooting at five yards, rapid fire versus 25 yards. That's kind of the biggest takeaway we had from this video is they were just shooting too fast for the threat that they had. Uh, one of the things we saw was the grip on police officer, very, very low grip and very passive grip, meaning not actively trying to crush that handle. So Zach takes the proper grip. What he's doing is he's going real, real high into this beaver tail, right? Real high into that beaver tail, activating right his, his his hands and his muscles into it the left hand is so high that it's hiding the slide line the line where the slide meets the actual gun itself in the video you could see kind of a lower 
grip, right? A lower, lower angle. What this shows me, and uh, when, whenever students are shooting like this, it shows me that they're kind of passively gripping the gun and not engaging the muscles of the forearms. When Zach actually shoots, what he wants to be doing is high, high grip, and you even see the forearms flexed. He's, he's pushing in on the high back part of the gun in anticipation of rapid fire. Right, so anytime you're potentially going to shoot at a target, right, that's not a piece of steel, but a threat, you need to anticipate shooting multiple shots and very fast. So let's go take a look at what it's like shooting on a target, multiple shots as fast as you can. Okay. All right, cease fire, downrange. Let's take a look at it. So Zach takes, this is cold bore for the day, and he shoots as fast as he can. Most police officers are shooting cold bore. I don't know a ton of them who show up on scene and they've been warming up that day. So it's actually a pretty realistic test. He takes a shot and, and pretty much this is his grouping. Firing as fast as you can. Pretty, pretty fast. Pretty fast, For right? cold bore. Pretty fast, he'll do about the same cadence at 25. But all of these targets are within about a four inch diameter. Okay, now let's take it back to 25 yards. So now we're at 25 yards. This is a much farther distance when you look at the target, like the target goes from this big to this big really fast. Zach's gonna shoot pretty much identical cadence and let's see where the impacts go. Now already from back here, I can see the spread, the diameter spread. That four inch diameter at distance becomes gigantic. In the first from five yards away, he shot nine shots, nine impacts with a four inch diameter. And now he shot 10 shots rapid fire, and I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five shots on paper. And this isn't to say he's a bad shooter. I know for a fact he's not. This is to say that he's shooting too fast for the distance, right? Your grouping is gonna open up at angles the further back you go. So we look at this, and I see a lot of really good shots, but a lot of misses. Now imagine if you weren't that great of a shooter. Imagine if you didn't have a great gun. Imagine if you didn't have a ton of training. Imagine if you were under total stress. Zach had no stress, and this is about like his best case scenario he could be shooting. Yeah, um, I definitely, like from even my own shooting perspective, like that cadence, I would never shoot that fast because I just, my sights were all over the place. So this is me just shooting as fast as I can, 10 shots. Obviously unacceptable to miss half my shots at a target of 25 yards. Yeah, and it's, it's unacceptable, but, uh, but how you fix that is you don't shoot that fast. If he shot slower, and that's what we're gonna show next, we're gonna show at a slower cadence and see how that changes everything. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna shoot from 25 yards, but at a cadence with a sense of urgency, but he's actually trying to put down the threat at, what would you call this, a pace you're just comfortable with? But, yeah, pace I'm comfortable with shooting at this distance, about okay. 25 yards. All right, about 10 shots. Let's see, see how, how, how much it changes. Ten shots at a pace that's a sense of urgency, but it's also a little bit calmer. It's not firing rapid fire. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten out of ten. This one, he's got to do push-ups for because that was almost a miss. But still, that's ten for ten versus fifty percent misses. Okay, and the only difference was he was shooting at a pace that is comfortable for him and his abilities. Yeah, I think, the, I think the chief difference between the two is shooting as fast as you're able to hit versus shooting as fast as you're able to pull the trigger. There's a massive difference there. And the fear that we have, the stress that we have, a lot of times will force us to want to shoot faster and faster and faster when in reality we need to do the opposite. So something I want to just add to everyone watching is, is this. It is very easy to ramp yourself up. Anyone can ramp themselves up. I can ramp Zach up just by yelling, go, 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 go. That's not the trick. Like you never need to train to amp yourself up. What you need to train is to calm yourself down and control your emotions, which is only gonna make you shoot better. So there you have it. That's our tactical breakdown of the six police officers in Oklahoma. What we'd love to hear is from you guys, what you thought of the video, what you thought went right and what went wrong. And if there's any videos you guys would like to see, uh, let us know in the comments section. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, also like the video and uh, stay tuned with USCCA for more content. And as always, continue training because that's how we move forward and that's how we progress.